Hello lovelies, and welcome to Toka's Tales. In this episode, we follow Ethan and Sophia, a couple whose lives take dramatic turns after stepping into the alluring but dangerous world of an upscale social club. As Ethan morphs into Eveline and Sophia finds herself captivated by the club's enigmatic owner, they both must confront the allure of new identities and the haunting cost of transformation. Through unexpected relationships and irreversible choices, they come to realize that some doors, once opened, can never be closed. Sounds interesting? Let's dive headfirst into this captivating tale together. Ethan sat on the worn-out couch in their small, dimly-lit living room, his eyes staring blankly at the pile of bills on the coffee table. The once comforting hues of beige and brown that filled the room now seemed oppressive, closing in on him like invisible walls. His palms were sweaty, and his heart pounded against his ribcage, as if it wanted to escape the impending doom. The business failure had been a blow, but borrowing money from those men, men his gut told him were bad news, had been like lighting a fuse to a bomb. Ethan clenched his fists, regret mingling with a desperation he couldn't shake off. Sophia was in the kitchen, her back to him, quietly washing dishes. Her shoulders were tense, a physical manifestation of the atmosphere that had settled over them in recent months. Though she tried to maintain an air of normality, Ethan could sense the worry that she carried, the silent questions she must be asking herself. Did she regret marrying him? Did she see their future as one big financial sinkhole? A sharp knock at the door reverberated through the room, breaking the uneasy quiet. Ethan's heart sank. He had been dreading this moment, the day of reckoning he knew would eventually come. He looked at Sophia, her eyes met his, widening with a mixture of fear and anticipation. Should I get it? She asked, her voice trembling slightly. Ethan stood up, his legs feeling as if they were made of lead. No, I'll go. It's probably for me anyway. As he walked to the door, each step felt like a journey to a point of no return. His hand hesitated over the doorknob for just a second before he turned it, bracing himself for what, or who, was on the other side. Ethan opened the door to find a tall, strikingly handsome man standing there, dressed in a finely tailored suit that probably cost more than his monthly rent. The man had dark hair, slicked back with a precision that seemed calculated to intimidate. Despite the unnerving situation, the man's smile was perfectly cordial, revealing a set of impeccably white teeth. Hello, Ethan, the man greeted, his voice smooth and unsettlingly friendly. Um, hi, Ethan stammered, his eyes flicking past the man to see if he had come alone. My name is Marco, the man continued, seemingly unperturbed by Ethan's visible discomfort. I'll be your financial consultant today. I hope that rings a bell. At Marco's introduction, a heavy dread settled in the pit of Ethan's stomach. He felt a surge of both confusion and fear. The term financial consultant rang through his mind like an ominous toll, confirming the connection to the dodgy people he had borrowed money from. He glanced back toward the living room, where Sophia stood in the doorway of the kitchen, her face etched with concern. Marco's words had indeed rung a bell, a tolling chime that signaled this was a day he couldn't avoid any longer. Seeing Ethan's gaze shift back into the living room, Marco casually asked, How's Sophia? Ethan's blood ran cold at the mention of his wife's name. How do you know her name? He stammered, his fear escalating. Marco chuckled softly. Ethan, you owe money to some pretty powerful people. Trust me, they know everything there is to know about you. The reality of Marco's words cut through Ethan like a blade, making his heart race even faster. Powerful people knew about Sophia, knew about their life, and the crushing weight of that knowledge sank deep into him. So, are you ready for the installment repayment? Marco asked, his tone remaining cordial but firm. Ethan felt a flush of embarrassment warm his cheeks. I don't have the money, he admitted, his voice barely above a whisper. He looked at Sophia again, who had now moved closer, her eyes filled with a mix of apprehension and sorrow. With his admission, Ethan felt as if he had failed not just himself, but the woman who stood watching caught in the crosshairs of his mistakes. Ethan sent Sophia a reassuring look, though he felt anything but reassured himself. He stepped outside, pulling the door closed behind him, leaving Sophia in the confined space of their home, away from the looming danger that Marco represented. It saddens me deeply to hear you don't have the money, Ethan, Marco said, 
his tone as well-mannered as ever, yet tinged with a gravity that sent chills down Ethan's spine. You and Sophia look like a lovely couple, and we live in such tough and dangerous times, Marco continued. I would be so, so sorry to see if something happened to either of you. Ethan's stomach churned as he realized the veiled threat behind Marco's polished words. Panicking, he found himself suddenly verbal, his words tumbling out in a desperate rush. Look, I'll do everything I can to pay off the debt. Just, just keep Sophia out of this, please. The reality of his situation, the vulnerability of Sophia, and the oppressive weight of his own bad decisions pressed in on him from all sides. In that moment, pledging to do everything he can felt like pledging to scale an insurmountable mountain, but for Sophia's sake, he felt he had no choice but to try. Ah, uh, I'm glad to see you're a sensible person, Ethan, Marco said, his voice as smooth as ever. People don't usually articulate their intentions to repay. They often need some direct encouragement to fulfill their obligations. Ethan listened, his heart still pounding, but relieved that the conversation had taken a somewhat unexpected turn. My boss, Raphael, sees some potential in you, Marco clarified. He's ordered me to give you an option to work off your debt. Our boss owns a club, and we could use someone like you. Ethan felt hesitant. The idea of getting further involved with these people was unnerving, but the prospect of erasing his debt offered a narrow sliver of hope. I'm grateful for the, um, option he said cautiously. I'll give it some thought. Marco's smile tightened just a bit. It wasn't actually an option, Ethan. It's your new job. I'll come to pick you up this evening. Ethan felt a complex mix of relief and apprehension. A pathway out of debt had appeared, but it seemed to lead through treacherous terrain. The risks and implications of deeper involvement with these people loomed large in his thoughts. Ethan stepped back into the apartment closing the door gently behind him. Sophia looked up, her eyes searching his for some sign of what had transpired. It was a manager of a club, Ethan began, choosing his words carefully. He offered me a job. I've been applying to any kind of job offering I could find, so I can start working on the debts as soon as possible. Sophia's eyebrows furrowed, her expression a blend of relief and skepticism. A club? Why would you want to work evenings in a club? That doesn't sound like you. Ethan sighed, meeting her gaze squarely. We're desperate for money, Soph. It's not ideal, but it's a start. I'll keep looking for other jobs in the meantime anyway. Sophia seemed to weigh his words, her eyes reflecting the internal struggle between caution and desperation that they were both feeling. She knew as well as he did that options were limited, and yet the offer, coming as it did, seemed fraught with unknown risks. But for now, it appeared they had little choice but to navigate those risks as best they could. As promised, a sleek black car pulled up in front of Ethan's apartment building that evening. He glanced back at Sophia, who stood in the doorway with an expression that mingled hope and apprehension. Stepping into the car, Ethan was greeted by Marco, who sat in the back seat. So, how are you feeling on your first day at the job? Marco inquired, his demeanor as polished as ever. Ethan took a deep breath trying to steady his racing heart. I'm scared, if I'm being honest, he admitted, his voice tinged with a vulnerability he couldn't mask. Marco, ever the gentleman, nodded understandingly. There's nothing to worry about, Ethan. We're here to settle your financial misunderstanding. Consider this a fair chance. Not many people are granted this sort of opportunity for repayment. As the car glided smoothly toward the city center, Ethan pondered Marco's words. They offered some comfort but the undercurrent of menace he had sensed earlier still lingered. It was a fair chance, Marco had said, yet the thought nagged at Ethan that he was entering a world with its own rules and penalties, different from anything he had known before. The car came to a stop in the city center, amidst the pulsing heartbeat of nightlife and neon lights. Ethan and Marco stepped out of the vehicle and approached the entrance of a club called Velvet Cage. As they neared, Ethan's apprehension intensified. This wasn't the sort of club he had imagined, and the name alone sent chills down his spine. They descended a flight of stairs to enter the club, and Ethan found himself in an environment that was a far cry from any job location he had ever envisioned. The club was luxurious to an extreme, dripping with an opulence that suggested it catered to the most powerful people in the city. Leather sofas were scattered strategically around the room, each accompanied by a table. Men, whose countenance and attire screamed affluence, 
were seated comfortably, enjoying the company of beautiful women who worked there as hostesses. The air was thick with a blend of expensive cologne, perfume, and the muted undertones of consequential conversations. Ethan felt utterly out of his element, intimidated by the exclusive atmosphere and the looming implications of his new job. He looked at Marco, who seemed perfectly at ease, and wondered just what he had gotten himself, and Sophia, into. Marco began to explain the nature of Ethan's role. It's mainly women who work here, but we want to cater to all sorts of audiences and tastes. We're looking to expand the club's reach. He paused before delivering the next line. You'll be working as a hostess. Ethan's eyes widened, a feeling of panic surging within him. Hostess? You mean a host, right? He stammered, grappling with a sudden and profound sense of misunderstanding. No, Ethan. I mean a hostess, Marco clarified. He then beckoned to one of the women across the room. As she approached, Ethan couldn't help but notice how the woman seemed to embody a sophisticated allure. She was in her forties, her curves accentuated by a tastefully designed evening gown. Her presence was magnetic, enveloping her in an air of elegant refinement that seemed to quiet the surrounding din. The way she moved with a controlled grace suggested years of experience navigating spaces like this, and her gaze, which briefly met Ethan's, hinted at an intelligence that was both welcoming and slightly intimidating. This is Vanessa, Marco introduced. She will be your mentor in becoming the cutest hostess this club has ever seen. Ethan felt like he had just taken a punch to the gut. His mind went into overdrive, oscillating between disbelief and shock. He thought of Sophia, their debts, and their desperate situation. He thought of how this job offer or mandate had spiraled into something far removed from his expectations, leaving him torn between the urgency of their financial woes and the compromise of his own identity. The room seemed to spin a bit as he grappled with the enormous implications of Marco's words. Was this his only way out, and at what cost? Vanessa smiled warmly at Ethan and said, Follow me, darling. She led him through the maze of leather sofas and high-profile clientele, toward the back of the club, into the staff area. With each step, Ethan felt his heart rate accelerate. He was gripped by a sense of fear, as though he had lost all control over his life and its trajectory. They arrived in a small room that resembled the backstage area of a movie set. Vanity mirrors lined the walls, illuminated by bright bulbs. Makeup kits, brushes, and palettes were strewn about on counters. Several women were seated in front of the mirrors, touching up their makeup and adjusting their outfits. They looked up as Ethan entered, their eyes lingering on him with palpable curiosity. Noticing their glances, Vanessa broke the silence. Ladies, this is Ethan. He's one of the girls now. A ripple of chuckles flowed through the room, and the women greeted him in unison, their voices tinged with a teasing lilt. Hello, Ethan. Ethan felt a rush of conflicting emotions. He was caught in a whirlwind of vulnerability, confusion, and, strangely, a flicker of camaraderie. This was his reality now, for better or worse. The weight of his situation settled heavily on his shoulders as he pondered the implications of this new chapter in his life. First things first, Ethan just won't do in the setting, Vanessa announced, locking eyes with him in the mirror. From now on, you'll be Evelyn. With a cheerful voice, she then turned to the other women in the room. Ladies, who's free to help with the transformation? Our Evelyn here could use a little magic. Giggles spread across the room as women announced it was their break time, but none seemed willing to pass up the opportunity. Wouldn't miss it for the world, one of them said, chuckling. Evelyn was gently ushered toward a sumptuous pink velvet chair that sat in front of an ornate vanity, illuminated by soft, glowing lights. The air was thick with an intoxicating blend of scents, high-end perfumes mingling with the subtle aroma of quality cosmetics, and an elusive floral note that she couldn't quite identify but found oddly comforting. As she settled into the plush seat, she took a moment to absorb her surroundings. Laid out meticulously in front of her were a range of professional-grade makeup tools, brushes of varying sizes and shapes, soft sponges, and an array of colorful cosmetics, all neatly organized in anticipation of her transformation. One woman, wearing gloves, picked up a sponge and began to expertly apply foundation to Evelyn's face. The gentle, circular motions of her hand seemed practiced, almost ritualistic, as she blended the creamy texture into the skin, achieving a seamless transition that left no trace of where her natural skin tone ended and the foundation began. 
Another woman stepped forward, an eyebrow pencil poised in hand. With a keen eye, she carefully began to reshape Evelyn's eyebrows, lifting the arch ever so slightly to bring a softer, more feminine touch to her features. As she marveled at the emerging reflection in the mirror, a third pair of hands reached for an array of eye products. A black pencil deftly sketched a fine line along her eyelids, widening and intensifying her gaze. Eyeshadow, in complementary hues, followed, skillfully blended to provide both depth and allure. Finally, a coat of mascara was applied, elongating her lashes and adding the finishing touch to her eyes, which now looked larger, brighter, and undeniably captivating. In the midst of all this focused activity, the hostess approached, carrying a set of wax strips. She offered a soft, apologetic smile, almost as if asking for forgiveness in advance. To truly embody the complete look, we need to attend to body hair, she murmured, almost delicately. With practiced ease, she pressed the wax strips against the hair on Evelyn's arms, legs, and chest. The initial yank of the strips made Evelyn wince, but it was over quickly. The stinging sensation faded almost as rapidly as it had come, replaced by the startling smoothness of her newly hair-free skin. As you'll be working here as a hostess, we expect you to maintain this level of grooming, the hostess advised, while carefully disposing of the wax strips. For your next shift, come fully shaved, please. The direction further solidified Eveline's understanding that her role at this venue was not merely a temporary dalliance. It was a commitment to a new persona, one that required not just external adjustments, but also a deeper, more nuanced understanding of herself. Sitting there, taking in her new appearance, Evelyn felt a sense of wonder and disorientation. She was becoming someone entirely new, and yet this felt oddly correct, as if aligning with a part of her she had only just discovered. Internally, Evelyn was a storm of contradictions. She felt humiliated, but also grateful for the odd sense of community in the room. The laughter and chatter around her contrasted sharply with the heavy dread that settled in the pit of her stomach. She thought of Sophia, and how far she had strayed from the life they had once envisioned together. Her reflection in the mirror slowly transformed, and with each brushstroke, she was led further down a path that felt both frightening and inevitable. Meanwhile, some of the ladies were in deep discussion about wigs and outfits, rummaging through racks of clothes and bins of hairpieces. One of them held up a dark wig with soft curls, while another suggested a red sequined dress that was hanging nearby. The options were both numerous and daunting, and Evelyn felt like a canvas being painted upon, her former self receding with every dab and stroke. Once the makeup was complete, the atmosphere in the room shifted subtly. All right, Evelyn? Time to take off your shirt. We've got something special you'll need to wear before the dress, one of the ladies announced. A sense of vulnerability washed over Eveline as she hesitated for a moment, then reluctantly complied. The women produced a prosthetic silicone breastplate from a box nearby, and Evelyn's eyes widened in disbelief. What was happening? Could she even go through with this? Before she could fully process her emotions, the women were helping her into the breastplate, adjusting it until it fit snugly against her torso. Then they slid a red bra over it, fastening the clasps and ensuring it sat correctly. You're doing great, Vanessa assured her, handing over a neatly folded pile of clothes. Now, go behind the curtain and get dressed. We can't wait to see the final look. As Evelyn stepped behind the curtain, her hands trembling slightly, a whirlpool of conflicting thoughts and feelings swirled inside her. She thought about Sophia, about their debts, and about how inconceivable it was that her life had led her to this very moment. Changing into the clothes Vanessa had handed her, she felt like she was crossing an irrevocable line, one that separated her old life from this strange new existence. The weight of the breastplate seemed to symbolize the burden of her choices, and as she prepared to step back out from behind the curtain, she wondered whether she would ever be able to carry it. Evelyn slipped into the red panties that matched her bra, followed by a red dress that flowed gracefully around her newly acquired curves. She pulled on red stockings, the fabric clinging to her legs like a second skin. Lastly, she stepped into a pair of elegant black flat shoes. The experience felt surreal, as though she were a character in some bizarre, convoluted drama. Yet the reflection staring back at her from the mirror was undeniably her just not in any way she had ever seen herself before. When she emerged from behind the curtain, 
The transformation was met with approving eyes and awed whispers. You look stunning, darling, one woman said. Just one final piece to complete the look, Vanessa announced, producing a long, straight, blonde wig from a stand. As she fit it snugly onto Evelyn's head, the room seemed to hold its breath, awaiting the finishing touch that would bring the transformation full circle. You look great, Vanessa said, taking a step back to admire her handiwork. I need to make sure you're flawless. Marco himself was ordered to look after you. She paused, letting the weight of her words sink in. You should know that Marco is the boss's right-hand man. He rarely gets involved with things like this, so you should consider yourself special. Vanessa's words loomed in the air, adding another layer of complexity to an already complicated situation. Evelyn felt both flattered and terrified, aware that this unexpected involvement from Marco signaled that her new role was far from ordinary. Since you're just starting out, it's best we stick together for the evening, Vanessa advised as she led Evelyn back into the main area of the club. The opulence that had struck her earlier was now tinged with an added layer of reality. She was now a part of this world, not just an observer. Evelyn felt a collective gaze settle on her as they made their way through the room. Each step seemed like an eternity, her flat shoes barely making a sound on the polished floor, amplifying her sense of vulnerability. Looks like you're becoming popular already, Vanessa chuckled. Someone's just requested our company. As they approached the table, Evelyn felt her legs shaking beneath her dress. Sitting there was an older gentleman, obese but exuding an air of elegance. He wore a well-tailored suit that seemed custom-designed to fit him, and he looked up from his drink as they neared, appraising Evelyn with an evaluative glance. Every fiber of her being screamed retreat, but she was painfully aware that turning back was not an option. With a heavy sense of trepidation, she followed Vanessa's lead, preparing to engage in the next unforeseen chapter of her strange, new life. Vanessa took the lead, her confidence cutting through the tension like a hot knife through butter. Good evening, sir. May I introduce Evelyn? She's new here and very eager to learn the ropes. The gentleman nodded and gestured for them to sit. New blood is always refreshing, he mused, his eyes lingering on Evelyn for a moment longer than she was comfortable with. Please, have a seat. Evelyn hesitantly took her place beside Vanessa, her legs still shaking but slightly steadier now. The seat was plush and inviting, but the atmosphere felt thick, charged with undertones she didn't fully understand. Her mind was a whirlwind of conflicting emotions, fear, embarrassment, but also a strange sense of curiosity about this new world she had just become a part of. Would you like a drink? The gentleman offered, already signaling a waiter over. Evelyn looked to Vanessa for guidance, who nodded subtly. Yes, thank you, she replied, trying her best to mimic Vanessa's effortless grace. As the waiter poured their drinks, Evelyn caught Vanessa's eye. For a brief moment, she felt a strange sense of camaraderie with her mentor. Vanessa had likely been through something similar when she first started, Evelyn thought. And while the circumstances that led her here were far from ideal, there was a small comfort in knowing she wasn't entirely alone in this journey. The waiter poured drinks into the crystal glasses, each drop a liquid luxury far beyond anything Evelyn could have afforded. The waiter retreated, leaving Vanessa, Evelyn, and the elegant, obese gentleman in their intimate circle. Raising his glass, the man proposed a toast. To new experiences, the clinking of the glasses seemed to reverberate through Evelyn's anxious bones. So, Evelyn, the gentleman purred as he gently placed his hand on her thigh. Tell me a little about yourself. What brings you to a place like this? Evelyn's heart pounded at the touch, a surge of conflicting emotions enveloping her. She glanced toward Vanessa, who offered a smile that mingled reassurance with caution. I'm... Exploring new opportunities, Eveline finally managed to say, each word carrying the weight of her mounting fears and uncertainties. Aren't we all? The gentleman's laughter was light, but Evelyn sensed unspoken complexities behind his gaze. Her mind raced. Each sip of the extravagant drink, each subtle contact, felt like a point of no return. Her thoughts turned involuntarily to Sophia. What would she think if she saw her now? Dread and a strange yearning filled her. Here she was, seated in a realm of hidden agendas and veiled transactions, her identity cloaked in a new name and address. 
Evelyn felt both detached from and profoundly connected to this new reality, as if she were teetering on the edge of something she couldn't yet comprehend. Vanessa, sensing the tension, gracefully intervened. Evelyn here is a fast learner, very adaptable. You should see how she's acclimated to this world, she remarked, her eyes meeting Evelyn's for a brief moment. The gentleman's gaze intensified, as if sizing up an intriguing artifact. Is that so? A chameleon among us then? He mused. Vanessa nudged Evelyn's leg lightly under the table. A subtle signal. Evelyn swallowed hard, fighting the tightness in her throat. I guess you could say I'm good at wearing different hats, she said, her voice carrying a hint of irony that the gentleman seemed to pick up on. His laughter filled the air again, filling the small bubble of space they occupied. Well, that's a skill that's certainly valued here, he said. Then his eyes met Vanessa's. A silent transaction of understanding seemed to pass between them. Vanessa nodded almost imperceptibly. Evelyn felt the man remove his hand from her thigh, and for a brief moment, she felt both relief and an inexplicable sense of loss. She couldn't shake the feeling that the touch, however invasive, had sealed some unspoken contract. A shiver passed through her as she contemplated what her acceptance into this world meant, what doors had been irrevocably opened, and which had been firmly shut behind her. Vanessa's eyes flickered to a spot behind Evelyn, her gaze locking onto something, or someone. I'm sorry to interrupt, but Evelyn has another obligation she needs to attend to, Vanessa said with a practiced smile, giving the older gentleman a courteous nod. He looked disappointed, but seemed to understand as he returned the nod. Evelyn turned and saw Marco leaning against a pillar near the bar, his eyes meeting hers. She made her way to him, feeling self-conscious and exposed in her new attire, yet she thought she saw something flash across Marco's eyes as he looked her up and down, a glint of something akin to attraction, perhaps. Very impressive, he commented softly, a slight smile pulling at the corner of his lips. You did well for your first day. Let's call it a night. I'll drive you home. Her heart sank a little. Can I change first? She asked hesitantly, already imagining Sophia's shock, or worse, her horror at seeing her like this. Marco's eyes narrowed playfully. I think it'd be more fun this way. You look so cute. It would be a waste to change you back so soon. Eveline's stomach churned with anxiety. The thought of Sophia seeing her in this state was terrifying. Yet what choice did she have? With a nervous nod, she accepted Marco's offer all the while wondering what her arrival home would bring. Upon entering the sleek black car, Evelyn took a seat beside Marco, who seemed genuinely impressed. You looked great tonight, he said, as the car smoothly accelerated into the night. Each word deepened her sense of embarrassment. The ride felt longer than it actually was, perhaps owing to the gravity of the night's events. When she glanced at the car's clock, it read 4 a.m. I didn't realize it was so late, she thought her mind racing with worries about Sophia seeing her like this. As they pulled up to her house, Marco's final words hung in the air. See you tomorrow, Evelyn. She carefully opened the car door, her heart pounding as she navigated the familiar path to her front door. Unlocking it as quietly as she could, she stepped inside. A wave of relief washed over her. Sophia was fast asleep, oblivious to the lateness of the hour. Evelyn tiptoed her way to the bathroom, her flat shoes making almost no sound on the hardwood floor. Once inside, she locked the door behind her. Hastily, she removed the red dress, stockings, and other accoutrements of her new life, stuffing them into a bag along with the blonde wig. Next came the makeup. As she looked at herself in the mirror, she began to wipe away the carefully applied cosmetics, each stroke removing a layer of Evelyn until only Ethan remained. With everything packed away, she felt a sense of relief, but also a pang of something else, something she couldn't quite identify yet. As Ethan stepped into the shower, the warm water cascading down his body felt like a purifying force, yet it did little to wash away the tangled web of emotions knotted inside him. He stood there, letting the water run over him as he replayed the night's events in his mind. He thought about the initial shock and humiliation of being transformed into Evelyn. Then, the surreal experience of working in that opulent club, mingling with men he never would have crossed paths with otherwise. A sense of powerlessness washed over him. His life had been yanked out of his control, 
and he had no choice but to play along in this high-stakes game, one that not only endangered him, but also Sophia. The mere thought of putting her at risk tightened a knot in his stomach. But amidst the fear and humiliation, there was also a confusing layer of... what? Intrigue? Excitement? He wasn't sure. Marco's compliments, the lady's enthusiasm over his transformation, and even the gentleman's request for their company. All these had stirred something in him, something he didn't yet understand or even want to acknowledge. As he finished his shower, turning off the tap and reaching for a towel, Ethan realized that his life had irrevocably changed. He was entangled in a world he knew nothing about, with risks and dangers he couldn't fully grasp. Yet, as uncomfortable and scary as it was, this world had also shown him a different side of life, a side that he couldn't simply wash away. The atmosphere the next morning was thick with tension, although only Ethan could feel the full weight of it. As he sat at the kitchen table, sipping a cup of coffee, he found it difficult to meet Sophia's eyes. How did work go? Sophia finally asked, breaking the silence. It was okay, Ethan replied cautiously, avoiding her gaze. It's a temp job, but the club is understaffed at the moment, so I could continue if I want. Sophia sensed his lack of enthusiasm, but chose not to press him further. Well, as long as it's helping us get through this financial hurdle, I'm grateful, she said, her voice tinged with appreciation. Thank you, Ethan muttered, feeling a mixture of gratitude and shame. Gratitude for her understanding and support. Shame for the secrets he was keeping from her. Sophia leaned over to give him a gentle kiss before grabbing her purse. I have to go. My students won't teach themselves, she said, smiling. As she walked out the door to head to her job as a primary school teacher, Ethan couldn't help but think about how normal her life remained, blissfully unaware of the dark and complex world he had just entered. The moment Sophia closed the door behind her, Ethan's phone buzzed on the kitchen table. He picked it up and saw a message from an unknown number. Hello, Evelyn, the message read. I'll be picking you up earlier today. Get yourself dolled up. A shiver ran down Ethan's spine. The thought of transforming into Eveline in his own home, the one he shared with Sophia, filled him with dread. But with Sophia gone for the day and no other options, he felt cornered. Ethan went to their shared bathroom and rummaged through Sophia's makeup products. With a hesitant hand, he applied some basic makeup, just enough to pass. His heart was pounding in his chest as he moved on to the next step. Retrieving the bag where he'd stashed Evelyn's clothes and wig, Ethan changed into the red dress, stockings, and flat black shoes. He carefully placed the long blonde wig on his head, adjusting it until it sat just right. Looking at himself in the mirror, he was Eveline once more. The reflection staring back at him was a complicated mix of identities, a juxtaposition of his desperate circumstances, and this mysterious, alluring persona he had just begun to embody. It was an uneasy reconciliation of who he was, who he had to be, and the overwhelming unknown that lay ahead. The sound of knocking brought Evelyn back to the present moment. Opening the door, she found Marco standing there, impeccably dressed as always. You look stunning, he complimented. His eyes taking her in, Evelyn felt a flush of embarrassment rise to her cheeks. It was as if each polite gesture from Marco chipped away at her masculinity, making her transformation into Evelyn feel increasingly irrevocable. Marco opened the car door for her, and she slid into the front seat next to him. As he maneuvered the car through the streets, she broke the silence. Does the club open this early? She inquired. No, Marco replied, his eyes meeting hers for a fleeting second before returning to the road. I was quite charmed by you yesterday, so I thought I'd take you out for lunch. The words hung in the air between them, creating a new tension that was entirely different from the one Eveline had felt at the club. What did this mean? And where was all of this leading? The questions clouded her mind as they continued their drive. Eveline's mind raced as Marco pulled the car into a high-end restaurant that she had only ever seen from the outside. The name glittered in golden letters. Le Classique. Her heart beat faster, overwhelmed by the thought of what awaited her inside. A place she never imagined she'd find herself. Certainly not as Evelyn. As they walked into the restaurant, she was acutely aware of the other patrons' eyes on her, making her feel exposed, yet strangely alive. The reality of the situation, of her new life as Evelyn, was sinking in deeper 
with each step she took in her flat shoes on the plush carpeting of the restaurant. They were led to a secluded booth, and Marco elegantly pulled out the seat for her. I hope you like French cuisine, he said. Her eyes darted to the menu, where she saw listings for dishes and wines so expensive, she had never dared to dream of trying them. It only amplified the surreal feeling that had enveloped her ever since stepping into the world of Velvet Cage. She was about to speak when a waiter elegantly poured them a glass of champagne, its golden bubbles ascending in the crystal-clear flute, another luxury she'd never have afforded on her own. Let's toast, Marco suggested, lifting his glass, to new beginnings. They clinked glasses, and Evelyn took a sip. The champagne was delicate and crisp, dancing on her tongue and contrasting sharply with the complexity of her feelings and thoughts. While they made light conversation about the club, their roles, and future plans, Marco's hand casually found its way to her thigh, resting there lightly but suggestively. The touch sent a shiver through her body, as her thoughts veered into a territory that she hadn't yet had the courage to explore. What did this mean for her, for Eveline, and for the life she had known as Ethan? Suddenly, Marco looked at his watch. It seems we've lost track of time, he noted, calling for the check. As they left the restaurant and Marco escorted her back to the car, Evelyn couldn't help but feel like she was stepping further and further away from her old life, embarking on an uncertain journey. It both terrified and thrilled her, leaving her wondering what would come next. In the car, Marco looked at her with an enigmatic smile. This is only the beginning, Evelyn, he said his voice tinged with both promise and mystery, as he smoothly maneuvered the car back onto the road. And so, as the cityscape rolled by, Evelyn took a deep breath. Wherever this was heading, there was no turning back now. Evelyn felt a mix of trepidation and curiosity, unable to completely parse what Marco's words meant for her future. As they drove through the city, she looked out the window, her thoughts racing. Marco finally pulled up in front of the club, the Velvet Cage. It looked different in daylight, less intimidating but somehow even more mysterious. He got out and opened the door for Eveline, a gesture that made her feelings of compromised masculinity resurface. Once inside, Marco led her downstairs to the luxurious lounge. Vanessa was already there, talking to some staff members. When she saw Evelyn, her eyes brightened. Ah, you're here, Vanessa said, approaching them. Ready for another day? Evelyn hesitated but nodded not sure what else to say or do. Excellent, you'll be shadowing me again today, but expect a few more responsibilities, Vanessa continued, casting a quick glance at Marco. Seems like you made quite the impression. As the afternoon turned into evening, Evelyn found herself increasingly integrated into the complex workings of the club. She was learning how to handle customers, how to manage uncomfortable situations, and how to maintain her composure. It was demanding but she was surprised to find that she was not entirely terrible at it. Still, every compliment from Vanessa or any other staff member felt like a double-edged sword, affirming her competence while also trapping her further into this unexpected life. Just before midnight, Marco approached Eveline. Time to call it a night, he said. I'll drive you home. As she sat in the car on the way back, Marco's words from earlier echoed in her mind. This is just the beginning and for the first time, Evelyn found herself pondering not just the immediate challenges that lay ahead, but the long-term ramifications of this unfolding chapter of her life. The days melded into a blur of glitz and glamour as Evelyn continued to work at the Velvet Cage. Each evening, she was enveloped in an atmosphere of affluence, where the scent of expensive perfumes mingled with the smoky allure of cigar smoke. Vanessa, her mentor, had been guiding her through the nuances of the job. How to talk, how to walk, how to hold herself. But one evening, Vanessa looked at Eveline and declared, I think it's time for you to start handling some clients on your own. A cold wave of panic washed over Evelyn at the notion. Vanessa's mentorship had been her safety net. The idea of letting go made her stomach churn. That same night, she found herself standing beside a table where a new customer sat. He was well-dressed, oozing the sort of confidence that comes with success and money. At first, he seemed polite, even charming. But as the waiter poured drinks that were so expensive Evelyn couldn't dream of affording them on her own, she noticed a change in him. The more he drank, the more his polite veneer began to crack. 
giving way to a clinginess that unnerved her. Internal alarms began to ring louder in Evelyn's head when the man's arm slid around her waist. She felt trapped. She could hardly breathe, let alone voice an objection. He was a new customer, and the last thing she wanted was to make a scene and potentially scare him away. Just when she felt she couldn't bear it any longer, Marco materialized beside the table. I must remind you of the club's guidelines, he said in a tone that, while polite, left no room for argument. This is a prestigious establishment, and physical contact with the hostesses is strictly not allowed. The man's arm retracted as if touched by fire, and his face flushed a shade that almost matched the red of Evelyn's dress. Relief washed over her like a cleansing tide, and in that moment, she felt grateful for Marco's timely intervention. As the evening drew to a close, Evelyn found Vanessa leaning against the bar, sipping a glass of white wine. You did well tonight, Vanessa said, her eyes meeting Evelyn's. Thank you, Evelyn responded, her words tinged with relief. But Vanessa's eyes held a question that went beyond simple congratulations. I noticed Marco intervened earlier. He never gets involved like that. What's the deal between you two? Vanessa asked, curiosity edging her voice. Evelyn felt a tangle of emotions nodding inside her. I'm not sure myself, she admitted, her voice barely above a whisper. As she said the words, Evelyn was aware of the chaotic blend of feelings swirling within her. Gratitude towards Marco for his timely intervention fought with a sense of unease. Why had he stepped in? Was it protection or possession? Did she even want it to be either? She felt as if she were standing on the edge of a cliff, peering down into an abyss of possibilities and implications, unsure whether she was ready to take the leap. The boundaries between her personas, Ethan and Evelyn, were blurring. And with each passing day, the lines separating her professional and personal life seemed to be evaporating. The questions loomed larger, the answers remaining elusive. Vanessa seemed to sense the turmoil behind Evelyn's eyes, but she didn't press any further. Both women knew that the world they navigated was as complex as it was glittering, and some questions for now were better left unanswered. As Marco's car came to a halt in front of her house, Eveline felt a mixture of relief and apprehension. The evening had been a roller coaster, and the drinks she'd had seemed to be amplifying her emotional fluctuations. Thanks for stepping in earlier, she finally said, her voice carrying a note of genuine gratitude. It's no problem. Clients need to respect the club's rules. Marco responded smoothly, then added, Besides, I didn't like seeing you with another man. The words hung in the air between them, and Evelyn felt a jumble of conflicting emotions. On one hand, there was a sense of flattery and maybe even a hint of excitement at Marco's possessive tone. Did he actually care for her? Or at least for the persona she portrayed? Was there an underlying attraction between them that went beyond their professional roles? On the other hand, there was a tinge of discomfort, bordering on alarm. Marco was her boss after all, and his personal interest could complicate an already complicated situation. The boundary between their personal and professional lives seemed more porous than ever, and that was dangerous territory. She was also aware that the words Marco used, seeing you with another man, cast her in a feminine role that she was still adjusting to. Was he seeing Evelyn as a separate entity, or was he simply playing along with the evening's performance? Either way, his comments seemed to validate her emerging identity in a way that was both thrilling and unnerving. Evelyn's mind raced with these thoughts as she sat there, the car's interior suddenly feeling smaller, the silence growing louder. With Sophia asleep inside the house and Evelyn here with Marco, it felt like her two worlds were on the verge of colliding, and she wasn't sure she was ready for the impact. The silence in the car grew almost heavy as Marco looked into Evelyn's eyes. Of course, sleep well, Evelyn, he finally said, his voice a soft murmur in the still air. Time seemed to slow. Marco's gaze shifted to her lips and then back to her eyes, as if asking for unspoken permission. Sensing no resistance, he gently leaned in, his hand lightly touching her cheek. For a moment, their lips met in a tender, unhurried kiss that seemed to last both an instant and an eternity. The kiss was soft, yet it spoke volumes, a complex interplay of relief, gratitude, and a hint of something deeper. Good night, Marco whispered against her lips, the warmth of his breath mingling with hers. Evelyn found herself whispering back, Good night, Marco. 
her heart pounding in her chest as if trying to escape. She paused for a moment to collect herself before opening the car door. The air outside was cool, but not as chilling as the sudden absence of Marco's presence. She stepped out of the car and headed towards the house, keenly aware of Marco's eyes on her every step of the way. Inside, she was both Ethan and Evelyn, caught in a dizzying maze of emotions and identities, each with their own set of challenges and questions for the path ahead. After that unexpected, intimate kiss, Evelyn felt more disoriented than ever. She sat alone in her room, thinking about how wrong the kiss felt, yet grappling with the indescribable feeling it evoked. She was becoming two different people. Ethan during the day, responsible and committed to Sophia, and Evelyn at night, increasingly entangled in a luxurious but perplexing world with Marco. Her life felt like it was spiraling out of control, each persona pulling her in a different direction. She was lost, confused, and uncertain about who she was becoming. As if to intensify her internal turmoil, Marco's involvement in her life seemed to escalate. The frequent messages, the outings to high-end restaurants that she could never afford as Ethan, the indulgent shopping trips, and the exquisite necklace he gifted her only complicated matters further. Evelyn wore the expensive necklace Marco bought her, feeling its weight both physically and metaphorically. It was as if the jewelry anchored her closer to this new life, to Marco, making it harder and harder to find her way back to her old self. With each passing day, the boundaries between her two personas blurred more, and she couldn't shake off the feeling that she was on the verge of losing something, either a part of her identity or the people who mattered most to her. Over the course of the next few weeks, the dynamic between Ethan and Sophia seemed to have shifted ever so subtly. Ethan, or should it be Evelyn, found herself sinking deeper into a life that was becoming increasingly hard to balance. Marco's attention was both flattering and disturbing, confusing her already clouded emotions. During this time, Sophia had noticed that Ethan had changed. There was something distant in his eyes, something she couldn't quite put her finger on. The unease had been gnawing at her for a while, but she tried to dismiss it, attributing it to the stresses of his new job. Then, one afternoon, as Sophia was heading home from her job at the primary school, her phone buzzed with a new message from an unknown number. It read, If you want to know the truth about Ethan's job, visit this address. Included was the exact location of the club where Ethan had been working. Sophia's heart sank. Every instinct told her to dismiss the message as a cruel joke or a scam, but the growing pit in her stomach told her otherwise. That feeling of unease that had been nagging her crystallized into a pointed fear. Unable to resist the pull of curiosity and worry, Sophia found herself heading to the address given, each step heavier than the last, as she braced herself for whatever truth awaited her. Upon arriving at the discreetly marked building, Sophia felt a rush of adrenaline. The loud bass of music emanated from the inside, contrasting sharply with her own heightened sense of silence. She took a deep breath and pushed the door open, stepping into the dimly lit world of the club. As Sophia walked into the dimly lit atmosphere of the club, her heart pounded in her chest. Across the room, she saw Ethan, or rather Evelyn, dressed in a red dress and a blonde wig, perfectly in place. Evelyn was engaged in conversation with an older gentleman at a table, seemingly comfortable and at ease. The sight shook Sophia to her core, her emotions swirling into a chaotic mix of shock, confusion, and a creeping sense of betrayal. Feeling as if she were in a surreal nightmare, Sophia turned to leave, tears welling in her eyes. Just as she did, a figure approached her. Sophia, isn't it? said a suave, eerily calm voice. She looked up to find a man elegantly dressed in a suit that probably cost more than her monthly salary. I'm Raphael, the owner of this establishment. Sophia's tear-filled eyes met his. She wanted to speak, to shout, to demand answers, but the words were lodged in her throat. It seems you've stumbled upon a secret, a delicate matter, Raphael continued. Would you like to talk? Feeling cornered, Sophia was torn between confronting Ethan and running away to a place where the truth could not touch her. Finally, she nodded. All right, let's talk. Raphael gestured toward a private area, away from prying eyes. This way, please. As Sophia followed, her heart weighed heavily in her chest. She hadn't caught Ethan's gaze. He was oblivious to her presence and the life-altering revelation she had just experienced. Whatever would come next, 
their relationship was on the brink of irrevocable change. Sophia sat back down, feeling as though she were caught in an undertow of emotions and intrigue. Raphael refilled her champagne glass and took a sip from his own. You know, he began, leaning back in his plush velvet chair, people often think that with power and success comes endless excitement. But the reality is that it can be quite lonely at the top, even boring at times. Sophia watched him closely, trying to gauge his intentions. Is that so? Raphael nodded. Yes, indeed. Take Evelyn, for example. Your husband, Ethan. He almost seemed to scoff at the mention of Evelyn's name. She plays her part well, but at the end of the day, it's all a game. A diversion from the mundane. Sophia's heart tightened at his words, but she held her composure. Seeing her uneasy, Raphael rose from his seat and walked over to a curtain at the side of the room. Would you like to see? Confused but intrigued, Sophia nodded. Raphael pulled back the curtain to reveal a one-way glass panel that offered a panoramic view of the entire club. Down below, Eveline was still sitting with the gentlemen, both seeming to enjoy their drinks and conversation. It appears your husband is having quite a time, Raphael said, studying Sophia's reaction. Sophia's eyes were drawn to the scene below, but it was as if she were looking at a tableau of a life she no longer recognized. Ethan was there, but not the Ethan she knew, or thought she knew. Raphael turned to face her again, his gaze intense. It's all theater down there, Sophia. Theater and masks. Up here, however, things are real. As real as they can get. Sophia felt her pulse quicken, uncertain of where this was all leading, but unable to ignore the magnetic pull of Raphael's presence and the tantalizing allure of this hidden world. So, what happens now? She finally asked, tearing her eyes away from the glass. Raphael returned to his seat across from her, setting his glass down. Now, Sophia, the choice is yours. The world is full of possibilities, many of which you've never even imagined. What you choose to do with this newfound insight will determine the course of not just your life, but perhaps others as well. Sophia took a deep breath, looking back at the one-way glass one last time. She then focused on Raphael, his eyes holding hers with a gaze that was as unsettling as it was captivating. Thank you, she said softly, for showing me this. Raphael nodded, a cryptic smile forming on his lips. You're welcome, Sophia. Just remember, the world is your stage, but it's up to you to choose the role you wish to play. Sophia felt the weight of his words sink in, leaving her more confused and lost than ever, yet oddly empowered. For the first time in a long time, she felt like the author of her own story even if the next chapter was a mystery waiting to be written. The next morning, Sophia woke up with a sense of both dread and enlightenment. She had seen a world that was entirely alien to her, a world that her husband Ethan had been a part of without her knowledge. The complexity of her emotions was overwhelming. She felt betrayed, yet she also felt an indescribable pull towards the opulence and the allure that Raphael had shown her. Ethan, on the other hand, was completely unaware of Sophia's clandestine visit to the club. He had been Evelyn the night before, caught up in the whirlpool of his other life. Seeing Sophia at breakfast, he sensed something was different, but couldn't put his finger on it. How was your evening? Sophia asked nonchalantly, sipping her morning coffee. It was busy, like usual. How was yours? Ethan replied, somewhat relieved to talk about mundane things. Interesting, was all Sophia said her eyes meeting his for a moment before looking away. As Sophia left for work that morning, she couldn't help but replay her conversation with Raphael in her mind. His words about choosing her role in this theater of life continued to echo in her ears. For the first time, Sophia felt like she had a choice, a say in her own destiny. But what choices were there, really? Her phone buzzed in her purse. It was an unknown number, but she already had a feeling who it might be. Sure enough, it was a text from Raphael. Hope you have a day as enchanting as you are, it read. Sophia paused, contemplating whether to reply. After a moment, she typed a simple thank you and hit send. Almost immediately, her phone buzzed again. Would you be interested in dinner tonight? I can send a car. Sophia hesitated. Her thumb hovered over the keyboard. Was she ready to plunge deeper into this mysterious world? Could she face the consequences, whatever they might be? And what about Ethan, her husband, the man she loved, 
who was living a double life as Evelyn. Could she confront him? Should she? Finally, she made her decision. Sophia typed her reply and hit send. Yes, I'll be ready. And just like that, Sophia felt as if she were standing on the edge of a precipice, looking down into the unknown. There was no turning back now. She was stepping into a new chapter of her life, her role yet to be defined. And for the first time in years, despite the cloud of uncertainties that hung over her, Sophia felt alive. That evening, Sophia got ready for her dinner with Raphael. She chose a sleek, elegant dress and styled her hair in soft waves. She looked at herself in the mirror, seeing a woman transformed not just by clothes and makeup, but by a newfound sense of self. The car arrived precisely on time, a black, luxurious vehicle that matched the elegance of the evening to come. The door was held open for her, and she stepped inside, her heart pounding in anticipation. As she arrived at the high-end restaurant, Raphael was already there, waiting for her at a private table. He rose as she approached, greeting her with a warm smile. You look absolutely stunning, Sophia, he said, pulling out her chair. Thank you, Raphael. This place looks amazing, Sophia replied, taking in the sumptuous surroundings. Throughout dinner, the conversation flowed effortlessly. Raphael was a man of worldly experiences, and his stories captivated Sophia. It wasn't just the conversation, though. It was the way he looked at her, like she was the only woman in the world. After dinner, Raphael leaned in closer, his eyes meeting hers. I'm so glad you agreed to come tonight, Sophia. I must say, you bring a sense of beauty and elegance that's hard to find these days. Sophia felt flattered, yet also strangely empowered. Thank you, Raphael. I'm still trying to understand everything, though. My life has taken a sudden turn, and I'm not sure where it's leading. Raphael nodded, a mysterious smile playing on his lips. Life is a series of choices, Sophia, and you're at a crossroads. But I assure you, the path you're embarking on is one of excitement and endless possibilities. Sophia felt both intrigued and intimidated. She remembered how he'd revealed Ethan's secret life to her, and how he'd ridiculed Evelyn. She was yet to confront Ethan, and her emotions were a tangled web. Raphael sensed her hesitation. You're thinking about your husband, aren't you? Sophia looked at him, surprised. How did you? I'm a man of perception. And you, Sophia, are an open book, waiting to be read. Would you like me to help you turn the pages? Sophia took a deep breath. Her life had indeed reached a crossroads, and each path was fraught with uncertainty. Yes, she finally said, sealing her own fate as she looked into Raphael's eyes. As they left the restaurant, Sophia knew she was stepping into a new world, a world of luxury, secrets, and complicated choices. She felt both excited and fearful, but, most of all, she felt alive. And as she looked out of the car window on the way back, she couldn't help but wonder how her life would unfold from this moment on. Meanwhile, Ethan was back at the club, unaware of his wife's encounter with Raphael. He was Evelyn for the night, but something felt different. A strange feeling gnawed at him, as if the walls of his dual life were closing in. His phone buzzed. It was a message from Marco. Are you free later? Ethan looked at his phone, his emotions in turmoil. His life as Evelyn had started as a means to an end, but it had evolved into something far more complex. And now, with Marco's increasing interest in him and the unspoken tension he'd felt with Sophia that morning, he wondered how much longer he could keep his two worlds from colliding. Little did he know, the collision was already in motion, and the impact would be more profound than he could ever imagine. Weeks had passed since Ethan first walked into that mysterious club and assumed the identity of Eveline. With each evening he spent in the opulent surroundings, enjoying the luxuries and attention that came with it, the distance between him and Sophia grew. The conversations grew sparse, the affection less frequent, and the emotional connection seemed to be fraying at the edges. In his solitary moments, Ethan would find himself yearning for the next transformation into Evelyn. Each time he slid the silicone breastplate over his chest, carefully applied his makeup, and slipped into his elegant outfits, a surge of liberation flowed through him. The wigs, the dresses, the very aura of being Evelyn, everything about it began to feel like second nature to him. And then there was Marco. The texts, the dinners at high-end restaurants, the expensive gifts, 
All of it made Ethan feel seen and validated in a way he had never experienced before. The pricey necklace that Marco gifted him on one of their dates became a symbol of this newfound confidence. Every compliment Marco showered on him made Ethan feel like he was floating on air, disconnecting him even further from his life as a husband. When he was Eveline, he didn't have to think about the mounting bills or whether Sophia was getting suspicious of his late nights and the inexplicable changes in his behavior. When he was Evelyn, he was free. However, this freedom came with a price. Each time he had to wipe off the makeup, remove the breastplate, and see his face revert to Ethan in the mirror. A sense of gloom settled over him. The vibrant colors faded to grayscale, and his everyday life seemed to lose its luster. Ethan's world felt increasingly like a box he was desperate to escape, and Evelyn was the key to that elusive door. The moments he spent as Ethan felt like a prison sentence, a life he was reluctantly tied to but longed to break away from. Sophia, too, seemed engrossed in her own world. She came home later and seemed preoccupied, but Ethan barely noticed. He was too immersed in the spiraling complexities of his own life. It was as if they were both slowly drifting apart, anchored only by the semblance of a life they once knew, yet were too entangled in their new realities to restore what was lost. Ethan knew something had to give, but what and when remained the looming questions. And with each day, the lines between Ethan and Eveline blurred a little more, leaving him in a state of emotional limbo, torn between two worlds, but fully belonging to neither. Weeks had passed since Ethan and Sophia had started living parallel lives each drawn closer to their new companions, Marco and Raphael, while drifting further apart from each other. Then, one evening, an unexpected convergence was engineered. Marco sent a text to Evelyn, asking her to be ready by 7 p.m. for an exclusive gathering that he insisted she shouldn't miss. On the other side, Raphael called Sophia, inviting her to the same restaurant for an intimate dinner with select guests. Sophia put on an elegant emerald gown, hoping to look both refined and alluring. Evelyn chose a stylish burgundy dress that she knew Marco admired. Each took special care with makeup and accessories, oblivious that their separate lives were about to dramatically intersect. Upon arrival, Marco greeted Evelyn with a hug and an affectionate smile, leading her into the restaurant. Inside, Raphael was already seated and rose to meet Sophia, embracing her warmly. With impeccable timing, they were led by the maitre d' to a grand table that was elegantly set for four. The moment Eveline and Sophia were seated across from each other, they locked eyes. The air instantly thickened with tension. Sophia felt as if the room had started spinning, her mind struggling to grasp the reality before her eyes. Evelyn felt a knot form in the pit of her stomach. Her identity crisis suddenly laid bare in the most uncomfortably public of ways. Marco and Raphael, Fully aware of the intertwined relationships at the table, exchanged a knowing glance. Each was keenly interested to see how this intentionally engineered situation would unfold. In Evelyn's mind, questions clashed with emotions. Was she Ethan or Evelyn? How could she reconcile these disparate parts of herself while sitting across from the woman she had pledged to love as a different person? Guilt and confusion weighed heavy on her. Sophia, meanwhile, was battling her own torrent of emotions. Shock, betrayal, and confusion fought for dominance. Yet a part of her was also incredibly intrigued by Raphael's mysterious aura, wondering how different he was from the man she had known as Ethan. Marco, breaking the uneasy silence, spoke first. This is indeed a special gathering. Sometimes in life, the paths we least expect to cross do. Don't you agree, Raphael? Raphael looked up and met Sophia's eyes. Absolutely, Marco. It's fascinating how destiny brings us together under the most unusual circumstances. It was a moment of reckoning for both Evelyn and Sophia. Here they were, at a crossroads, each caught in a web of love, identity, and betrayal. The veil had been lifted on their double lives, exposing wounds and raising questions that neither could easily answer. It was clear, as they sat through a dinner that had now turned into a crucible of sorts, that life, for each of them, had irrevocably changed. The dinner had taken an unexpected turn. After the initial shock wore off and some semblance of normal conversation resumed, Raphael decided it was time to discuss the real purpose of the gathering. I've called this dinner to share some big news. Marco and I are planning to expand our business to a neighboring city. 
Raphael declared, pausing to let the information sink in. It's a golden opportunity for all of us, one that comes with its own set of responsibilities and challenges. Marco will be heading the new operation, and I'd like him to take someone he trusts. Marco, would you do the honors? Marco turned to Eveline, his eyes meeting hers with a sense of gravity. Evelyn, would you be willing to embark on this new journey with me? Before Evelyn could even react, Raphael turned to Sophia. And as Marco will be relocating, there will be new responsibilities here. Sophia, would you be interested in staying and helping me run things around? Your background in organization and management as a teacher would be invaluable. The room grew silent, the weight of their choices hanging heavily in the air. The room went uncomfortably quiet. Each person contemplated the weight of Raphael's words, knowing that their decisions now would irreversibly affect their lives. Sophia's mind raced. She looked at Ethan, Evelyn at the moment, and saw a flicker of excitement in his eyes. That same flicker made her anxious. Would she be willing to step so far out of her comfort zone, away from her stable job and familiar environment? Could she even fit into Raphael's world, which was so different from her own? Evelyn also wrestled with mixed emotions. The prospect was tempting. It was a chance to fully embrace this newfound identity that had liberated her from years of monotony and self-doubt. But she was also aware of the chasm that was slowly growing between her and Sophia. Could she take a step that would widen that chasm irreparably? Sophia felt her heart pounding as she took a deep breath. If this is the path we're contemplating, it's not one to be walked lightly, she finally said her voice tinged with both apprehension and a strange kind of excitement. Evelyn caught Sophia's gaze, her own eyes clouded with uncertainty and anticipation. After what felt like an eternity, she spoke. I need to think this through, but I'm leaning towards yes. Raphael smiled, sensing the tide turning in his favor. Excellent, he said, raising his glass for a toast. To new beginnings, then. Marco lifted his glass as well. And to prosperous futures. Glasses clinked, each sound echoing the gravity of their decisions. As they left the restaurant, Sophia went with Raphael, both heading towards his opulent residence while Evelyn left with Marco. Their destinations were different, and the air was heavy with both promise and uncertainty. In the silence of Raphael's guest room and the solitude of Marco's modern apartment, Sophia and Evelyn sat in quiet contemplation. The choices before them were daring, risky, and laden with unknowns. Yet, Despite the swirling vortex of their emotions, both felt an odd sense of exhilaration. They were on the cusp of new beginnings, teetering on the edge of decisions that would chart the course of their future lives. But for the first time in a long while, they felt not just optimistic but alive, even if their paths seemed to be diverging more than ever before. The corridors of the city's most exclusive mall were slick with polish, shining with a cold, emotionless light. Here, Evelyn and Sophia walked together heels clicking rhythmically against marble floors. A silent exchange of glances conveyed the acknowledgement of the decisions they had made. Evelyn had altered her body irreversibly, sculpting herself into a new form through plastic surgery. Breasts augmented, waist cinched, hips broadened. Her face, too, was different, softened and feminized, lips full and plump. Her long, natural hair framed a face that was no longer Ethan's, but distinctly her own unrecognizable from her past life. It was as if she had shed her old skin, leaving nothing of Ethan behind. Sophia, too, had traded one life for another. Gone were the days of chalkboards and grading papers. She had aligned herself with Raphael, finding in him a new world of power and influence, yet one that was devoid of innocence, demanding its own kind of sacrifices. The friendship between Sophia and Eveline had somehow endured these seismic shifts. Yet as they perused the high-end boutiques, neither could shake the weight of their choices or the understanding that they had irrevocably diverged from the lives they once knew. It was a disquieting realization, underscored by the sharp edges of the diamond jewelry they admired, but didn't touch. Do you ever miss it? Sophia finally broke the silence, her words tinged with a sadness she couldn't fully conceal. Evelyn looked at her for a moment, as if contemplating how to phrase her answer. Sometimes, she said, her voice soft but steady, but then I remember that the past is a place I can never return to. What about you? Sophia sighed, pausing to gather her thoughts. I do, 
but then I consider the cost of turning back, and it somehow feels even more daunting than moving forward. Both women shared a knowing look. They had been reborn into new lives indeed, but at the cost of shedding identities that could never be reclaimed. There was no going back, only forward into a future that looked increasingly unfamiliar, yet was entirely of their own making. As they continued their walk through the mall, the heavy sense of ambivalence settled between them like a fog, punctuating the complexity of the lives they had chosen. Both were left wondering, albeit silently, at what price comes transformation? And had they paid too dearly? The answer was unspoken, but it lingered in the air, as palpable as the opulence that surrounded them. Thanks for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you did, consider subscribing to my channel, leaving a like and comment.